Hey, it's Fraser's one album you gotta buy this week. And Transit, 22, here with Transit, or you wanna go by the real name or the uh, stage name or? Yeah, well, a lot of people just call me Dan, so. G something. Yeah, G money. G money. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you've probably heard of Transit over the uh, past year after the album came out. Uh, the song Calgary is probably the first thing we should talk about because we made the song, made the video, really took off and uh, got you a lot of attention. Kind of talk about the aftermath of that. I mean, it was it was cool. Uh, I wanted to, first and foremost, I really wanted to showcase the Calgary music scene. Kind of showcase a bunch of the different things that are going on in Calgary. Um, and it was a month before Stampede, so I thought, you know, this is a good time when everyone's focusing on one thing to try and bring other things into focus. Um, and so that was kind of my, my first and foremost goal. It actually kind of limited me because, I mean, like, even I was talking to a, a reporter and he's like, why were you so specific with mentioning Calgary bands? Because if you hadn't have done that, it would have been so much bigger because it wouldn't have been so exclusive. You know, much music was looking at playing the video, but it was such an inside joke that it, it got vetoed. But for me, it's like I was more stoked on the fact that, like, you know, uh, National Post and stuff, they would write articles about how Calgary is changing and they would reference my song. So really, what I was trying to accomplish actually did get accomplished and I was, it, it kind of um, helped me transcend the barrier of being just a rapper and put me into the, a public figure kind of role. So. But you had some negative, negative feedback from it as well. Yeah. I mean, a lot of, I mean, you have both sides. There's a lot of people <clears throat> who are like, you know, I've been a cowboy all my life and I appreciate this because it, you know, diversifies the city. But then there's a lot of people who will be like, you know, like they, they're challenged by anyone who goes against the norm because they, they have what they know as Calgary and they don't want anyone questioning that. But for me, I believe like you need to always constantly, you know, go against the grain in order to make a city better. Like stop being complacent with how it is and start looking to what it could be, right? So, I mean, there's people who send you hate mail and, and come up to your shows and try and pick fights with you and stuff like that. But that's kind of awesome because it means that you're doing your job, right? The eight hour, ch hour challenge. Um, <laughs> what led you up to, to, to making this this process, the eight hour challenge? Well, it's completely a joke. You know, like uh, just a couple buddies were like, you know what? We want to challenge ourselves and we want to like make a statement about top 40 music. So, I mean, a lot of people come up to me like, <clears throat> transit, like, you should do this, you should do that. You should make a song for the radio because then you'll get famous. You should do this because then I can dance to it in a club. And I was just so sick of hearing it. I just wanted to show people how easy it actually was. So we sat down and did the song in eight hours, like recorded, shot, filmed, like everything, um, and then made the song. And the ironic thing is that it actually became pop. Like we were trying to get it top 40, and it actually started getting played on top 40 stations, and, and it started going viral. And it was the most viewed video on YouTube on like a day in January. Like it was just, it was just crazy. You accidentally wrote a hit. Yeah, I mean, and. <laughs> And, and, and I mean, it was so, for a while, I was so angry about it because it was like, anywhere I go, like I go to shows and people would be like, eight hour challenge. And it was like, I was a one trick pony. And and I, I only performed that song once as a joke kind of thing. And, and I made sure to kind of steer people to, to my real stuff. But I mean, looking back on it now, like I'm super grateful because it spawned so many opportunities for me. And you know, it's brought about a lot of awesome things for me. I mean, that's the thing about like the industry these days is like, you get there any way you can. Like there's no real set path anymore. So but yeah, but yeah Gene Simmons called you and you told him to, uh, he told me we weren't interested. Yeah, he emailed, uh, <clears throat> he emailed me and Dave, and he had a, a kind of a plan ready for us. Like, um, I want you to do this. I want you to sound like this band mixed with this band and make this kind of music. And he said, I think his words were, our label is very interested in you. And so he kind of wanted us to go to Toronto and, and uh, showcase and, and, like, make kind of poppy, maybe like LMFAO or one of those kind of music or whatever. And then me and Dave were kind of thinking about it, and obviously it's tempting. You know, guy, it's not every day you get an email from a guy like Gene Simmons, but um, we sent him our real music, and we're like, this is what we actually make. And if you're interested in working with this, then we can talk. And if, if you just want the eight hour challenge stuff, then we're not interested, and we never heard back. So we're like, well, man, I guess you gotta stand up for what you believe in, man. Yeah, yeah. I've got to thank Galaxy Diner for letting us come and, and shoot here today. I encourage you to check out Transit if you haven't yet, and pay attention because new music coming very soon and lots of it. It's Transit 22, 
Brazier's one album you gotta buy this week.